So, you're starting out on film? Then this is what you need to do. Grab your camera, roll a film, go out and shoot. That's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Peace. Now, all jokes aside, here are some tips that will help you when you are starting out on film. Welcome to another episode, let's talk it over. You're probably very excited to shoot your first roll of film or you already shot your first one but the results didn't come out as you wanted them to. So I won't make this a long one, just a couple of good things to know. First, know what film you are shooting. Is it the black and white film stock or a color one? And what ISO speed is the film that you are using? Those are important things to know because on digital photography you are able to change those things and on film you're not. Check the box what ISO speed your film is. It will most likely say that it's a 200 or 400 speed film. Or if you got the film that I enjoy the most, it's a 800 speed film. If your camera got a built-in light meter and it allows you to set the ISO speed, set it to that speed. And if you are using an external light meter, do the same on that. Knock. What is known to push me cat? But if you don't have a light meter at all, then you got to use the Sunny 16 rule. I've got a full episode where I explain how you can use that rule in the field. I'll link it down below. If you are using color film, it can be nice to overexpose your film by one or two stops. Then you'll get more detail in the shadows, but you can also achieve those pastel looking tones. That means that you set your light meter to 200 instead of 400 if your film was a 400 speed film. This doesn't mean that your 400 speed film will be a 200 speed film, but you are just tricking your light meter. You'll need a camera where you can set the ISO for the meter. If you are shooting a point and shoot for instance, then you might not be able to do that. Next up, and this depends on which light situation you are in, check your shutter speed. On a bright sunny day you'll be able to shoot at faster shutter speeds to freeze the action. But are you shooting in low light situations or you are using an slow speed film then i wouldn't recommend going lower than 1 60th on a slr and 1 30th on a rangefinder but if you want some motion blur be my guest of course you can also change the aperture of your lens set this to f8 or 11 maybe even higher to get a great depth of field so you won't have to worry about critical focusing unless you want that shallow depth of field then go as wide as your lens can. Remember that the more light you let through the lens, the more you probably have to compensate with your shutter speed. And of course, the other way around. These settings are of course the same on digital, but I thought that it would be good to mention. Also, if you are using a fully automatic camera, then you're not able to adjust any of these things. And if you're shooting on auto, but your camera can also shoot manual, I would recommend shooting on manual you will learn so much more. After shooting your camera on manual for a while, it will be a second nature. Trust me. Now you're all set to go out and shoot your precious film. A great tip which I tell to everyone is to meter for the shadows. Just point your camera or your light meter to a darker part of the image. Not the darkest, but definitely not the brightest. For example, on this image, I metered for the grass and not the sky. Especially color film can handle those highlights very well. So don't be scared to blow them out by overexposing. On digital, this is the other way around. Then you want to meter for the highlights because you can get a lot of information back out of the shadows. Underexposed parts of your film are hard to recover and look muddy quick. And don't be afraid to use your flash if you need more light. Do this on your frames and I bet you'll get some good results. Now you've captured your precious moments and you want to see the shots. You'll have to think about what the best way is to digitize these images. First, the film has to be developed. You can do this yourself, but because you are watching this episode, I think that it's best to send it to a lab. They'll do the chemical process and you don't have to worry about anything. The most interesting thing is how you scan your negatives. Because this is what it will look like when you are getting your negatives back from the lab. But of course there's also the option to let the lab handle the scanning part too. And if this is your first time shooting film I don't think that you have a dedicated film scanner at home. So in this case, I would recommend to let them be handled by the lab. Just make sure you do some research on the scanning quality of the lab. 
check out their Instagram or request some sample images because it's possible that they are not providing the look that you're going for. But if you are interested in doing the scanning part yourself, go and check out the episode that I've made where I compare all the scans from the lab, DSLR scanning and also flatbed scanning. Some last words before you go out on your journey on film. Don't be scared to ruin the film or come back with only ugly images. Everyone who starts out on film will experience this. I even shoot some roles nowadays where I think, well, that's a waste of money. So stick to it. And if you have any questions about shooting on film, cameras, lenses, you name it, just hit me up in the comments down below or shoot me a DM on Instagram. I'm always happy to help out where I can. If you want to see me shooting on film, check out the series that I upload on this channel. I've got Run Along where I take you with me through a POV experience and frames where it's all a little bit more cinematic. And of course, this series called Let's Talk It Over, where I explain things and review the gear that I love to use. But for now, thanks for watching. Hit that like button if you thought this was helpful in any way. And I'll see you next week. Peace.